Oh. Hello, 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 and welcome to your Living a Course in Miracles audio book club call. My name is Jared Krebs. I'm coming at you live from San Antonio, Texas. Today is February 2nd, 2018, and I am excited because we're going to be discussing Chapter 12. I w I'm excited to talk about Gloria's experience of oneness followed by the ego thought followed by the separation followed by all this craziness it was a very very good 30 minutes so i can't wait to talk to you about it and we always start off each call by having each person uh, just share your name where you're calling in from or dialing in from whatever you want to say and why you're excited about today's call who wants to go first I'll go for it. I'm sorry. Oh, you're <laughs> go good. Ahead. You go for it. Now you go for it. I'm Rosalia. I live in the Caribbean island, Puerto Rico. My first language is Spanish, second language, English. I have read The uh, Disappearance of the Universe three times twice in, in English and once in Spanish. Cool. And wow. I was searching for for a community like yours and I, I got it. I got there. I have seen the videos of your discussion of this uh, audio book and, uh, and I like it. Awesome. Well, Rosalia, welcome to the, the call. We're honored to have you. You. You, are our you. First, you are our first Spanish speaking participant as first mm -hmm. language. Uh -huh. Our uh -huh. first person also from Puerto Rico, and we are excited that you're here. Congratulations on reading The Disappearance of the Universe three times. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's quite an accomplishment. Look forward to I chatting. Had to. <laughs> okay, who's next? I'll go next because I don't see anybody else uh, starting here. Uh, I'm Sheila Sear from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I'm excited tonight because I, I actually Googled where some of you people are from, and I find it really cool that we can get together from all parts of the world and, uh, and talk about this stuff. I think that's really cool. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we got all kinds. We got like several countries represented on this call. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sheila. All right, who's next? Okay, I'll, I'll go. I'll... Um... I'm Langdon Tompkins. I'm English, but I live in France. So if, to me, it's tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. So you're representing two countries. Yeah, England and <laughs> France. Yeah, uh, je suis parle français. <laughs> um, I'm uh, I'm excited about this. It's uh, as you say, um, Mrs. Watnick. Uh, got a bit uh, of an ego trip after she got into the actual. Um, understanding of uh, trying to let go of the body uh, ego started to panic a bit and uh, started to fight back and she had quite a rough time and I think it lasted quite a long time too so um, having experienced a bit of that myself um, it's, uh, it's good to see that I wasn't the only one <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely not the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I am, no. <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, well, over to somebody else. <laughs> yes, thank you, Langi. All right, who's next? Um, okay, I'll go next. I'm Viola Krebs from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I am Jared's mother. I am excited about the call because um, yeah, we're, we're turning into a global call here, and um, technology's great. It's great to, I want to hear everybody's take on the chapter, and just happy to be here. Awesome, Mama. Thank you for being here. Excited you're here. Thank you. All right. Hi. Hi. Hey, this is Nathan Lively in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I'm Jared's dad, and I'm happy to be here. Um, looking forward to 
forgiving all of you. <laughs> We're looking forward to being forgiven. Uh, home of Super Bowl 52. What's it like out there right now? Is it uh, crazy? It's crazy. It's uh, pretty busy downtown. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, welcome, Nathan. Glad you're here. Thanks. Okay, so let's get right into it. So chapter 12 was like 33 minutes long or something. And I just listened to it again today, like the entire 33 minutes. And I'm glad I did because I think I've pretty much forgotten everything the first time I listened to it. And really like there was a lot, there was a lot of realness there with the stories, you know, especially with Gloria. Um, I, I really liked the, the poem at the very beginning where it talks about where she was talking about um, like the song that you, how do you say it? Like the song that you is that you hold so dear and you don't quite remember where you heard it, but you know, it's more dear to you than anything in this world. And like, just, I don't know, something with that, like kind of really resonated with me. Like, whoa. And I don't know. I, I think that was from the manual for teachers or in the song of prayer. Cause I think I've read that before um, that, that part that opens up the chapter. And so I really, really enjoyed that. And I enjoyed hearing that. And then when she talked about like that meditation where it's about oneness and she says, imagine you're, you know, you're in one and you're at peace with God. And then you have this tiny mad idea of what would it be like if I did my own thing? And then boom, this, this uh, world emerges and the split mind of the decision maker. And she talks about the, the sides, the, the, what's it called? The, 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 the side of darkness, the side of light and the middle or something like the three sides. And basically how she wanted to stop the dark side and her wanting to stop the dark side is basically her projection coming from herself. I still don't quite get all of that on a, on a mind level, like on, on my conscious level, but I don't know if I necessarily need to, to uh, know that I just need to keep forgiving. And I think the, the best part about how the chapter ended was realizing that I don't need to do anything and realizing the error is just such a tiny error. Oh, and that, remember the part where they talked about how, like, um, this is, like, this line is time, and this little blip was, like, the whole entire, the whole entire universe was just, like, this, it didn't even happen type thing, and, like, and I'm thinking, God, it sure feels real, you know? Jared, can I ask you about Gloria's, um, story was it did she really experience it or did she have a dream i don't know well i mean i know she didn't really experience it because it's not real but is it like did she actually have this experience like yeah my understanding was that she had that experience she had the experience that was my understanding that it was oh, it's not in a dream. It wasn't a, it wasn't a dream. I, I, it's my understanding that it was real and that it lasted for like 18 months. Oh, I'm not sure where I, where I heard that from, but I heard 18 months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I have to go back and listen to it because 18 months. I don't, I, I don't I know if it, it was like where it happened 18 months ago. Uh, well, no, no. Cause I think it happened when Ken was here. Cause this was all since Ken. Well, you probably yeah. read something somewhere else about that 18 months because no, she says 18 months, but it, it says it. Don't you, do, Viola? I think it was you who said that there is this uh, Living a Course in Miracles guidebook that goes with this. Somebody posted a link. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, in that guidebook, in the opening narration, okay. it says, um, she then illuminates the course theory of original miscreation by describing a journey that she took over an 18 month period. Okay. All right. 18 months. That's way to go, Sheila. That's good to know. See, I, it's nice to have many minds on this. Only one. I need it's to print that one. up. Yeah, there's only one. 
Well, there's only one of us, really. Yeah, there's only one of us. All right, way to go, everyone. <laughs> All right, so um, so yeah, so so basically, just to sum it up, it was a very good chapter. It was very real. I really enjoyed her explanation of how the world came to be. And I also liked hearing Ken and her interact. Got to hear some of Ken's sense of humor. And I'm also just really grateful for this group because it really forces me to like hone in on each chapter because I know I'm going to have to share. So that's it. That's, that's all I got. So we're talking about chapter 12. Who's next? What was your highlights from chapter 12? Oh, I seem to be live, so I'll, I'll go. All right. Um, I think really uh, the key thing here is like um, Mrs. Wartnick got to the point where she was remembering, as you say, the sort of separation, but she didn't really understand that. And she, she then realizes that there's, you know, she hasn't got one mind anymore. And then it's sort of split into like the three, as you say, there's the Holy Spirit, the ego and the decision maker. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course that takes a bit of getting used to. And also you've got these kind of competing ideas going on and coming into your head so you you've got the idea that you've got to get back to where you you know started mm -hmm. and the ego which is your has been your companion since birth suddenly feels vulnerable and we all know how vicious the ego is um i think for me, the ego was something that I didn't realize was external. You know, I, I, whenever I'd heard of the ego, I thought it was, you know, oh, everyone's got one. So there's loads of egos. Yeah. And I didn't realize it affected the outside world. You know, I just thought it was, you know, people start getting on their high horse. Oh, it's his ego, isn't it? Um, I didn't know the ego would put, hazards out there for you to fall over or fall into or get walloped with you know that kind of thing and i think this is you know and and then of course she understands what she should do but then she's presented with this 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 gang of thugs that she needs to deal with you know she's projecting from what is the ego is given a guilt so that is the problem and it's used by the ego to mess with us um, and then the ego will make you project everything that you're guilty about onto everyone else so everyone else is to blame but we're actually projecting that so um, the thing is that the Holy Spirit represents love and love never opposes um, so you know you really do have to, I mean, there's no mention of Holy Instant, but Holy Instant has become quite important to me because the Holy Instant is when you literally stop and take stock and think, hang on, <laughs> which mind am I actually using at the moment, you know? And, and then just ask to see it differently. And that's, the, in a sense, what, 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 what's going on does kind of make it a little bit more complicated than perhaps it needs to be because ultimately it always comes down, as Nathan said, to forgiveness. Forgiveness is the key that opens the door. But if you've got this, um, you've got all these bad guys trying to get you, you know, it's going to put you off and it's going to make you forget the only instant. It's going to make you forget to forgive and you're back in the loop and you're back restarted. So... But I think the fact that she's got to the point where she knows about these, the Holy Spirit, she knows that the ego's out there, so she knows what to look for. Um, once you know what you're dealing with, you, you can then experience and learn what to do. If you don't know what you're dealing with, 
and you know you'll just end up like most people on the planet have no idea what's going on and that's what the course is about i mean in a sense it it may be to be not called the course in miracles it should be called how to identify deal with the ego and then, <laughs> and then, and then the miracles come but it might not be that interesting to people about that you know anyway that's my take on it and um yeah <laughs> i you. really like everything you had to say thank you yes thank you. <laughs> okay over, over to somebody else <laughs> <laughs> all right I'll go next. All right, Mom. Well, I thought it was, I liked Gloria's experience and her explaining it. It was, it was really, I kind of felt sorry for her because she didn't, um, she didn't realize that, that she was the bad guy. She says, we have to stop them from doing this. So she knew that, 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 she want, that it wasn't right. We have to stop them from doing this. And um, she says, it sounds like every war that goes out there. Um, she says, I never conceived I was the bad one. So it, she's just like not even realizing that what's going on really, but she knows that she wants to, you know, put the blame on someone. They're responsible and we have to stop them. And we're, they're attacking God and we have to do something. So she was desperate and panicked. I, I kind of felt sorry for her with that experience. Um, the... Um, the last way it ended, love does not oppose, like Lange said. Uh, God, is, God is and sees to speak. Christ shares in that being. Christ, God, Christ, truth, and love cannot be opposed in reality. I, I like the ending of that. It was, it was interesting to hear Gloria's, Gloria's experience. I have not had an experience like that. So I wasn't sure how she had that experience. Well, actually at the end of the audio, remember how it says we have that experience every day in, oh. the, in the, the sense of blaming other people for our unhappiness, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it just kind of made it to where it was like, oh, this isn't just Gloria's story. This is representative of our mental uh, activity of every day, <laughs> every moment, you know. But um, she went through this for 18 months at different levels. You're going to have to ask Sheila about that, man. I don't, I don't know about the 18-month thing. I don't think it's that important, really, <laughs> to, to put a lot of energy to that. But... Um, <laughs> I just, I just, uh, my linear, my linear self is having trouble <laughs> making that 18 months and having her do a part of it every day. Uh, or, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila? I, you know, I don't know. All I did is read it. You know, it's, it's there <laughs> for y'all to read. <laughs> I wasn't there. I don't know. <laughs> I think we all were there. <laughs> How do we get Gloria Wabnick on this call? Ask, ask her. Okay. Oh. I'm, I'm not sure. Is she still alive? Yes. I think so. Oh, right. I'm yeah. Okay. yeah. Dang, dude. Yeah. All right. I, I would invite her to the group. I'm going to try and figure out how. Is she on Facebook? Mm, I don't know. Probably. I think that, wouldn't I think that be amazing to have Gloria Wabnick on this call? It certainly would. The thing is, what you've got to realize is when Ken and Gloria were doing this, this was like just after the book had been written. So they were basically pioneers. So they oh, were yeah. sort of, they had nobody really to talk to. I, I can relate to that. I mean, I, until you guys came along, I was I, doing this completely solo. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I haven't experienced these light beings. Um, I thought she'd experience that during meditation, but you know, I, 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 I didn't. I, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But my, my meditations and meditation isn't something that's particularly. It's never mentioned in the course. It just says spend time, you know, with God. You know, I, I, I say my three minutes with God sort of thing every day if I can. And um, I, I've had experiences where I've seen light, you know, like all encompassing light. 
and, and on one occasion when the I was on the daily you know class thing it said you know today something will happen and I, I sort of meditated for about half an hour and during that meditation I experienced seeing lots and lots and lots of faces they were like passing I was almost like passing through a mist of different faces which I found extraordinary and and what I thought I was probably seeing was my previous incarnations wow now, that's that's not that's nothing to do with the course that's just what I thought I was seeing Mm-hmm. And there was hundreds of them because um, uh, Gary said he experienced something like that with mm-hmm. Artemis Purcell once. So that was really what I was relating to. Um, most of these faces were quite old. N- not many of them were young. And, um, and some of them were pretty weird looking. <laughs> and, um, but they, there was just loads and loads and loads of them, just like... Wow. One after the other. And it was difficult to, to sort of remember like a particular face, but there was loads of them. So like I say, I haven't experienced light beings, but I have experienced all enveloping, comforting light, uh, but only about two or three times. And that's over a, quite a long period of time now. So, uh, Was that while you were meditating? Yeah, it's, it's, I I have got a much more peaceful mind than I've ever had in my life. Even as a small child, my 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 mind was always on the go, and um, I'm so grateful for that. And um, but when I try to sit quietly, it takes me quite a long time to get into a really a, a really sort of state where I feel that sort of. I don't know the the outs the the light coming in because it you know the colours change and all that sort of thing. I, as I've said before, I get interrupted by my cat. My cat will appear from nowhere and suddenly distract me, um, <laughs> or the phone will ring. You know, the ego will will go out of its way to mess mess with me. But <laughs> um, I'm not so bothered about meditating as I am at just living. I suppose I'm actually begin, you know, living the happy dream, um, which I'm surprised at because I've not been doing this as long as like Gary has. I mean, you know, Gary's been at it for twenty odd years, you know, and I've only been at it for what four. So um, I feel privileged, really. Um, but yeah, that's all I can say. I mean, this week, you know, has been amazing. I haven't really got very much to report, you know. It's all, one could That's say great. it's quiet. <laughs> so, right yeah, can't knock it, you know. It's good. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I love that thing about um, into into eternity where all is one. There crept a tiny mad idea which the son of god remembered not to laugh i just think that is such an amazing quote um and if you said that to somebody in the street they'd think you were start raving bonkers wouldn't they really and yet it says everything about you know this falling asleep and then starting to dream this nonsense up that we think or perceive to be a reality um, um, and, and, and to sort of get to where, you know, you can realize that there is a way back, that this doesn't have to be how it is, I think is, is so powerful. And the actual, what you have to do to, to get back is so simple. I love how this, the simplicity of just understanding the power of forgiveness. I mean, it's so blooming amazing and yet it's so difficult to get that to get that across to anybody and i I can understand why 
she would want to go out and evangelize because that's what I wanted to do when I started this. And once you start evangelizing, you upset people and you end up in conflict. What I do now is I, I just listen to people and then the subject might come up and then I, I will say, well, the course will say so and so about that and then see how it goes, you know. Because the course has got an answer for just about anything that comes up in conversation. It really has. Um, and I don't know. I, so I, I think I've reached a point where I, I'm ready to be a teacher. You know. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just feel a bit, I don't know, slightly embarrassed. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I'm, yeah. I, it's, it's almost like, you know... Um, am I really ready to be a teacher or is it my ego saying I'm ready to be a teacher? Playing a trick on me, you know what I mean? I've been a bit mixed up this week about that. Well, you know I have because I sent you that message, didn't I? But, um... <laughs> T-O-G, T-O-G. Lady, yeah. T-O-G. Am I? You think so? T-O-G, bro. You reckon they give me the job? It's just, it's just your ego telling you you're not. Yeah, but is that it? It, yeah, <laughs> I'm so messed up this week. It's just, yeah, it's nothing. T-O-G. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we're all T-O-G, aren't we? That's right. Yes, that's exactly right. We are all T-O-G. Yeah. What's T-O-G? Teacher of God. Oh, okay. Yeah. I must not be there. See, the thing is, I, I was talking to a lady today, and I said, look, it, I, in the course, it says to me that I'm... What is it? Uh, there's, a, there's a little thing. Um, oh, that's it. I'm, I'm here only to be helpful. Um, I'm here because he who sent me. I'm going to get this slightly wrong, I'm sure. Um, I don't need to worry what to say or do because he who sent me will guide me. I don't have to worry where I am because wherever I am, he will be with me. And when I'm with somebody... I'm being healed when I'm healing them. Now, that's not word perfect, but that's generally the gist. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not just me. That's everybody on this call. If you've decided to follow the course, the very act of making the decision to do so means that you will get there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nobody doesn't get there. You know what I mean? I think that's the other wonderful thing, isn't it? You know, most people with, with whatever they taught, were taught as children think, well, I'm not going to heaven because I'm not good enough. Well, the course says the complete opposite. Everybody goes to heaven. You know, everybody's already there. We just think we're here. <laughs> There's nowhere else to go. There isn't. No. So that's so, so, I don't know. It's just beautiful, isn't it? You know, it's just oh, yeah. wonderful. You know, no discrimination. Which is why I came to the conclusion, you know, what God would put his son on a cross. You know, I'm a parent. I wouldn't do that to my kids to make a point. And that never made any sense to me. But, of course, no, that wasn't what happened. You know? Yeah, it's just ego thought system right there. Yeah. You'll have to shut me up. I'll go on all night. All good, all good. <laughs> all right, Sheila, what was the highlights for you on Chapter 12? Okay. <clears throat> well, I made a couple notes, so we'll see. I think there's two main things here. My notes look really long, but I'm going to try and compact it, hopefully. Um, interestingly, this week, the poem, the forgotten song, actually did resonate with me, which is unusual because poetry, like I said last week, usually just goes zoom right over my head. Um, but it resonated with me a lot, and I think it was a lot in part due to Gary Renard's original form of prayer that he talks about. Um, and that he does the meditation. I posted I posted a YouTube uh, link on our group a few days ago, and the Forgotten Song just really reminds me of that meditation. That was good. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, I practice that regularly, just about every night. Uh, actually, this okay. Here's I'll expand on my notes. Every night when I go to bed, I review my day mentally in my head, and I think, okay, let's see. I got up. I was cool. It was okay. It was all right. I wasn't upset. I drove to work. There was nothing happened. Okay, I was at work. And, oh, that thing happened. Right. Okay. And I practice forgiveness on it right there. I do that at the end of chapter five. I must have. Oh, that's so smart. Okay. And then I and then I go on to the next thing that happened, and 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 I just review my whole day 
and I practice forgiveness on each thing that happened. And then I go into Gary Renard's meditation and I place all the things I think I need on the altar and, and yes. I release my attachment, theoretically, to them. And life has become so much more peaceful, as Langdon says. I don't, uh, I, the little things get me. The dog poop still gets me, uh, which I didn't see. Any. Um, but <clears throat> at any rate, that's, that's what I do in regards to the Forgotten Song. So I was really, uh, I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, in conjunction with that, she said, Gloria said at the start that she wants us to re-experience the love that we are and that we're part of God. And I, if you have a couple minutes, I'd like to share my experience of when I, I actually had an experience of that. All of my life, I thought I needed a man in my life to give me love, for me to put my love onto and to receive it back. And I felt I needed to receive it back to feel it. And uh, it, it's, it was actually a, a, a failed love relationship that caused me enough pain to bring me to the course. So one day when this love relationship was kind of on the down and out, it wasn't quite done yet, but it was really awful. And I suffered a lot of pain, whatever. But I'd been studying the course. I was out walking my puppies around the block. And all of a sudden, this huge wave of love encompassed me it, it's like the light that they talk about it was above me and below me and inside me and outside me there's no no place where this light was it, i experienced it as love i didn't see a light it, for me it was love and i thought why i don't i, I couldn't figure out why i was feeling it because there was nobody for me to project it onto and there's nobody giving it to me and i realized oh my god i am it i i have it i am it i don't need it from outside i don't need to put it on to anything. I have it anytime I want. And I'll tell you, life changed for me in that moment. It was incredible. I can't, I can't even tell you how incredible it was. So that was, that was a thing. Wow. That, you know, I was, I, that was brought back to my memory through, uh, through this chapter. How and, long ago was that? Oh, that was probably 18 months. No, I bet that was probably five years ago. Oh, okay. I've had that experience. Uh, okay. I've, had, I've actually had, I think, five or six really incredibly mind-expanding experiences that I can only attribute to having been practicing forgiveness. But I won't, I won't get into all those today. Maybe I'll tell you about them sometime. But, but the, other wow. thing about, yeah, the other thing about this chapter that I really liked is, uh, as Gloria was talking about seeing the guilt or the darkness is outside of her. And, and she thought we have to stop them. It's, it's them. It's, it's them, them, them. And it reinforced to me, um, the concept of whenever I am upset, it's me. It's not out there. It is never, ever, ever them. It is not them who left the dog poop out there. It is not, them who who wronged me in some way it is always my mind's reaction to it that's always what it is and uh, and that's you know, when it, I practice. it's our mind it's my mind looking for the opportunity to be upset yeah I was yeah, exactly. predisposed I was just yeah. looking for the excuse to blow up that's right and so therefore there's only one place where it can be healed and that's in yourself in your own mind and I love that because it means there's something I can do about it. If all of the things that upset me were really out there, the driver who cut me off and the guy who left his dog poop out there and the man who left me or, you know, my kids doing something, whatever those things are, I can't change those things, but I can change my mind and I can change the way I see it. And so I love that. Um, let me see. There was something. Da, 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 really da, da, good. Yeah, there was something. Oh, the other thing about being able to realize that it's it's me and it's in my mind is if you're pointing out there and blaming, you know, the world, that's when you're really making the world real. But when you bring it back into your own mind, well, the mind is kind of, you know, abstract and formless and you know, where is the mind, right? It's 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 it, it just makes everything make more sense. For me that's it that's my stuff love it thank you sheila you're welcome 
All right, Nathan Lively, Chapter 12. Rosal Rosalia, did you listen to Chapter 12? Yo! Yo! Um, yeah, I listened to it again. The thing that really jumped out at me <laughs> this time was something I had a realization about last, I don't know, a few chapters ago, but it came out to me again, and I don't know, it's my favorite thing recently, I guess, which is kind of reminding me that every person I meet and every conversation I have in every moment is a choice to choose between separation and between unity. And so that's what it, that's what I started thinking about when she was talking about, I had, I had the opportunity to think, is there an opposite to heaven? Is there something else? And I was like, right. That's what we're, that's the choice every moment of the day. Ooh, um, yes. Yeah, so that was my favorite part of this chapter. Preach. I love it. That's, that's a great reminder, Nathan. Thank you. It is a moment to moment thing. If we can just keep choosing with the Holy Spirit and choosing forgiveness moment by moment by moment until it's just normal, natural, every day, every moment, every second, then uh, there's really no need to do to go anywhere. I mean, yes, to drive or do something, yes, but what I mean by that is we'll, we'll already have that state of peace. Yeah, be vigilant only for God. Yes, and then when we finally do pass away, we're already in that state of peace, and we make the decision with the Holy Spirit and don't have to reincarnate anymore. Yeah! Best part. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nathan. Rosalia, did you, did, were you able to listen to chapter 12 or are you um, just observing today? Well, I'm kind of observing. I uh, have not received, I ordered it, the, the audio book and I have not received it yet. Okay. And then I, I had a copy from, from the website of, of a, a written file. And I was thinking it was that, so I read session 12, but I, now that I hear you talk, I noticed that I read the wrong thing. I thought I was reading it, uh, that the audio book was written. Oh, yeah, no, no, it wasn't. The audio book is, um, I think it's, it's like seminars that were, that were given by Ken and Gloria that were just like excellent seminars. And no, but in the in your Facebook page, I'm sorry, I said your web page. It it said um, it has a file. Yeah. Okay. And I opened it, and and downloaded it, believing this was the the audio book written. Aha! Uh -huh. I know what you mean. And I read seven well, and I was confused confused about the chapters, but uh, when when they're about what you were talking, all of you were talking about. One uh -huh. of the experience that I've had is um, the feeling when I think about the creating everything I see and that everything that has been happening to in my life or to me mm -hmm. is that I am, I am the one doing that with my mind and I'm projecting yes. all this I'm the script writer and also the actor, and, and I make this old other um, personajes. I don't know how to say that in English. Personalities? Yes, the other people that are uh, acting in the movie, I also yeah. make them what they say and everything. And it kind of scares me <laughs> because then I believe uh, I am alone. There's nobody else. Like if uh, right now I'm talking to you and other and all the, the people that are, that are in here, but the really all of you really are me projected in you. But it's a way like going to um, lighten up all the experiences that everything was designed to go back to where we come from. 
Mm-hmm. But the first time I I I thought about perfection, it I really got scared. <laughs> Even though, uh, like everybody, I'm looking for happiness and feeling well and tranquility, etc. Then when I was reading, for example, the the, uh, the disappearance of the universe, and and knew that perfection god is perfection and we are already there we haven't left there we are only doing this uh dream or nightmare uh, i'm sorry i got lost here well the, the thing is the the knowledge of being perfect scared me yeah <laughs> so i'm handling that situation and i i pretty much understand many things of a question miracles and uh, for example, the other idea when they talk about energy is not real either. And, uh huh, tell me. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, well, well, that uh, uh, it's not that easy, or maybe because the ego makes it not easy, <laughs> because if we are already there. There's nothing to be done, only wake up. And we're trying to, with all these lessons and practices of the workbook, we are trying to wake up to the real thing. But 100%. it's not easy. <laughs> we, we think we are still here, and we believe that, and we are living being here. Yeah, it's a gradual, it's a gradual awakening. Mm-hmm. If it all happened at once, we would be, we would be freaked out. I don't know why yeah. we're having an echo right now. Mm-hmm. Not sure. Not sure. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> I think. Are Are you on speakerphone, Rosalia? Rosalia. Yes, because I'm on my phone. Is does it? Should I lower the volume? Maybe that would help. Yeah, see if see if that yeah, does it. I lowered it. How is it now? Yeah, it's, it's something something to do with speakerphone. Not sure. Maybe it's the next time I'll outside the computer. This yeah. has been a difficult there we go. for me trying to connect with with this group, but I'm here. I, and I appreciate your patience. Absolutely. I'm so glad you're here. And thank you thank for you. thank you for being on for the first time and sharing sharing everything that you're learning. It's very exciting. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's do forgiveness in the field. So we have five people on. We have fifteen minutes. So what's the math? Three minutes each? <laughs> All right, Rosalia, can you go on mute, please? So you want me to go? Yes, sure. So the thing I thought I'd share with you is that um, I'm launching a new course with a partner for the very first time ever. Uh And I tried to be really cool about it and just be like, oh, yeah, whatever we do is great. And then I realized that I have expectations that I didn't make clear to the guy that I'm working with. So then I find myself like, this morning trying to meditate and just kind of thinking about him the whole time. And I don't even have like any kind of bad experience with him, but I'm sort of like already making a case against him in my mind, which we talked about in another chapter. And I kind of went through the morning and wasn't until I was coming home from something else later in the morning that I had the realization like, Oh, forgiveness opportunity. And then I forgave him, and then I felt better. Nice. Um, that's that's success. That's the most important uh, lesson of your of your your week or your life or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't know if anything changed, um, you know, but my attitude definitely did, and and it also made it easier to remember a couple of other times today, like when I was listening to that chapter later today, like I'm kind of annoyed by Gloria's voice. And so I have to 
that's just like another forgiveness lesson for me. And so as soon as it comes up, then I can forgive it and, and it kind of goes away. Yes. Well done, sir. Very Thanks, good. Guys. Thank you. All right. Who's next? I'll go next. Forgiveness in the field. All right. Are you timing me, Jared, or do I time myself? I'll time you. Okay. Um, I had a divine moment today. Um, I call it divine because it was very unexpected. I went in for my, um, my first chemo after surgery. So my surgery was three weeks ago. I went in this morning with kind of not sure what to expect because um, chemo after surgery, I haven't even recovered from, sur recovered from surgery yet. So um, I got this new, this PRN nurse, which means it's a nurse that comes. She doesn't work in that unit very often. And I have been since my, since, since my healing journey with cancer, I've been marking my IV bags with um, complete health and wellness. So I'll take one of the nurse's tapes, write complete health and wellness, and, and have the nurse put it on my IV bags. And they did that in surgery. They've done it through all of my chemos that I've had. I've had four already. I've had five now. And um, this new nurse, she said, well, yeah, that's great. We'll do that. But we have this uh, shortage of saline bags. So that kind of like, you know, and at the time, I don't really forgive it until you guys are talking. And then I'm like, yeah, I have to forgive that because there's a shortage of bags. So it really kind of, kind of put some of my medications like, oh, shoot, I've got to hurry. Okay. So anyway, to make a long story, divine moment, um, the, the nurse, I made all my little tapes for six bags. And she took them and left. And every time she'd come to hang my bag, there was no tape. So I'd be, so we'd make another one. Me and my daughter would make another one and we'd put it up. And she came back again and she's like, there's no tape. So finally I asked her, I said, what happened to all those tapes that I made? And she looks at me and she goes, well, I put them on all of the other patients' bags. She, and, and I thought for both of us, we all went, oh. then we went, wow. What a divine moment to share health and wellness with strangers that I don't know and to really feel like I wasn't getting it, but I was like, I was being diligent. I put mine back up, but what a way to, first of all, I had to forgive it for a minute. I'm like, wow. So um, that was a divine moment to just feel that. And, and we all felt it. Even the nurse, she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, no, it's okay. It's kind of cool. It's really cool that you did that because all of these patients were having divine and I don't know, six lucky people got my tapes, whoever, because it was full. It was a full suite, oncology suite. So um, I just wanted to share that, that, um, you know, now that I look back at my day, I had lots of things to forgive from that experience in the oncology. But that one was really a divine moment to, to know that, you know, it was as a whole. Beautiful, Mom. And you did it in two minutes and 45 seconds. Very good. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. All right, who's next? Forgiveness in the field. I will go ahead and go next. Uh, that's awesome, Viola. I think that is absolutely really cool. I, I was going to say something about, it. oh, to give and to receive are one, are the same. Like, I think that is just so awesome. The Holy Spirit acted in that case. Like, the Holy Spirit did it because it wasn't my thought. Exactly. For the best of all concerns. Like, yeah. you wouldn't even think to do that. I think that is so cool. Uh, my forgiveness lesson is, is not quite dog poop dog poop but it's still huh? okay so I clean houses for a living I work for myself and I and as we talked about last week Langdon I feel like I've done all the big stuff so I'm cleaning someone's house and I was in the bathroom and this is a couple that they have uh, custody they have they have the husband's kids visiting two days every two weeks so I go into the kids bathroom and there is clutter I couldn't even get in the bathroom there's a five gallon pail on the floor. There's towels on the floor. There's stuff all over the counter, teeny tiny little counter. And I, I started going, <laughs> wait, forgiveness. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, actually I'm really grateful for this job now that I think about it. Okay, fine. I'll move all the stuff. And pretty much just like that, it went away. But I really started, I could feel like, <sighs> okay. wow. So that's it. That's a win, big time. Yep, yep. They all are when you when you do it. It is. Yep. 
And in one minute and 30 seconds, no less. Well done. All right, forgiveness in the field. Who's next? What did you forgive this week? Um, well, I suppose it's me. It's you, Lengi. Um, I'm on such a good week, I haven't really got much to say. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I had a new job. It was a short, because it's a temp job. I, I worked in a wood yard this week. And everybody there was lovely. The job went swimmingly. I did have a bit of a bad do on one of the things they got me to do. I just wasn't up to the job. It was too hard for me. Um, and they, they, I, well, they forgave me for making a mess of it. So I forgave them for forgiving me. Um, other than that, um, I forgave myself for being silly the weekend. You know, that little message I sent you. Because I think you were right. So that was that. And other than that, I'm doing forgiving people that I see everywhere you know like I said about you know that Gary said about forgiving a, a young girl came out of a lift you know didn't know who she was but forgave her anyway and I just go you know if I see anyone I you know I don't know who they are but I just forgive them as I walk by and people at work all these new people I met were all lovely and I forgave them for being lovely and there was one guy who wasn't very nice so I forgave him for being that as well so that's my forgiveness in the field. But, you know, it's, it's got to be done. Fan fantastic. I love weeks <laughs> like that. Yeah, well, it's, it's been brilliant. You know, it's been, the week before was pretty grim. Um, but I, I, I put that, I, I learned such a lot. I think I, I've, I've had the day off, the week off. Absolutely. Well done. Well done, Lange. That's, that's me. In a minute and 40, man, we're making amazing time. I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's you really rock, morning. <laughs> you rock, man, for being on at, uh, what is it, 2.50 in, at night? 2.50 yeah. on a Saturday morning for you? Yeah, but the problem is when I go to bed afterwards, I'm wired for about an hour. Oh, yeah. You, man, I can't sleep. <laughs> I want to acknowledge you for paying the price to be on this call. Yeah, but, but the thing is, it's not a sacrifice. That's right. When you love it, you love it. You I love it. it. Yeah. Right. Love it. Thank you, Lengi. Okay, Rosalia. Uh, what did you forgive this week? Forgiveness in the field. Well, you have a, a few minutes. Forgiveness in the field is, um, well, I had an experience where I saw that I, what was happening and I was conscious about it, but I did not want to forgive. <laughs> and, but I remembered once that I heard um, uh, Eckhart Tolle saying that accept that you cannot accept. And, uh, and uh, uh, Kenneth Watmick said that we, um, also have to forgive ourselves uh, and that basically basically that <laughs> and mm -hmm. the other thing was uh, for I had the ex experience of this um, girl that was asking for a gift for her birthday one of the kids that I used to train in gymnastics she's already adult and sh uh, she asked for her birthday to help this uh, house that helps women that have been treated badly with violence, etc. And but I, while I was dealing with this situation, I noticed so many things that came into my mind that had to do with with that, and I understood how not the situation in front of me. Uh, per se is the ha is the the one that has to be forgiven. There are more levels underneath that that we are unconscious of it, but I noticed it in this moment, and I understood the the forgiveness. It's more profound than we think. Sometimes we think it is. Wow! Is Thank you so much for sharing, Rosalia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great job. Two minutes. 
All right. Oh, All that, right. That's it. It's not that easy for me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> great. great share. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to go. Rosalia, will you go back on mute for the echo? I'm sorry. I forget. It's okay. okay. I forgive you. All right. So timer is going. Forgiveness in the field for me. A um, few things. I had a uh, one business partner not get along with another business partner. And it's kind of like I'm uh, in between, I guess. So I had to just forgive the whole situation and not come to like a big rash decision like, oh, I'm going to leave this business partner or whatever. Like just let's, let's, let me forgive. Let it be between them. Let me forgive the whole thing. And let me just kind of put it in the hands of the Holy Spirit, see what happens, see how it develops so that I don't suffer and, um, and I don't make any rash decisions. That's, that's a big thing for me is to, um, to handle it, to handle it in a, in a positive way or handle it well. So that was a big one. And another one was, I had a, a different business partner. Business is just such a great, uh, business is just such a great thing for forgiveness. Um, I had another business partner call me and say, he's ready to go on his own. And he, he's ready to start his own team and he doesn't, he's going to be unplugging from all the trainings that we provide. And that one, I definitely like felt, um, disrespected or, but at the same time, it's like, that's actually what you want in our business is to create these leaders. But I, I definitely had to forgive the situation and, um, not react to the situation and did did a good job because me and that person are now still really uh, close. I didn't I didn't sever the relationship or get mad or upset. So that was another great forgiveness lesson. Um, another one: um, the dog crapped again right in the on the stairs, and I I cleaned it up. And um, I noticed how afraid the dog is. Like and and the dog doesn't really know doesn't he I, he doesn't trust me like oh and he bit me today this little black dog I went to bite it or to pet him because I was the only one home and he's like because he's afraid of me and I've never I've never hurt the dog I've never is done this it. your um stepdad I'm sorry is this your father-in-law's dog no oh, okay. this is the dog that my wife and my mother-in-law saved off of the streets okay. he can probably feel your anger <laughs> he's just scared of me man and and i took him out i thought i'd take him out to pee and be a good person since i was the only one home and um anyway yeah so there's my three minutes i forgave him i forgive the dog i met very very um nice to the dog too so okay there you have it guys um awesome awesome time i really enjoyed this time with you all Next Friday, we'll be discussing chapter 13, which is also a 30-minute chapter. And then our last Friday, or in two Fridays, will be the last chapter of the entire book, which I think is an hour long. And Rosalia, there's actually an app called Audible that um, I can send you this link. You can download it on your smartphone, and you can actually listen right along, and you'll be, you'll be right with us. So we have two chapters left, guys. Two chapters. Woo! And um, by the way, we have a session with Gary Renard on uh, February 14th, me and my parents. So I'm going to be asking him then like what he recommends for our next audio book or where we go from here. So we'll keep you all posted. Okay, so that concludes our meeting. Uh, Thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and have everybody unmute themselves and everyone say, have an awesome night and God bless. Have an awesome awesome night. And God bless. God Have bless. an awesome night and God bless. See you all next week. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>